It's time to drop the hammer. Drop it need for Emerson Axum down on the inside. He's going to two foot that thing onto the back straightaway with Justin Grant winging off the cushion down the back. Shoot into turn number three. Going to keep him company here. They roll across for lap number one. Axum's going to lead the charge. Meanwhile, Justin Grant on the attack. Look out. Axum slips up off the bottom. Came up and shut the lane down. Justin Grant caught him by surprise. You could see the what the look on his face as Buddy Kofoy's going to wing one out across. There's your first slide job of the night. Grant easily turns it back down to the inside for the number two car and charges into the corner. Kofoy's going to work the bottom onto the front straightaway. Axum leads him across for lap number next. Four score into books. Grant back by car length and a half. There's top three. It gotten out away from fourth on the field. That's Cannon McIntosh duking it out with Dason personally as Kofoy pulls a little probe down on the inside. A test slider, if you will, for the 67K car. As Grant goes after your top spot, races his way through. That was a drive job. Out across, a little slip of the grip. He'll look back down to the inside. Here's your slider. Slings it out through. Four and a fluff for him. High side of the racetrack. And unfortunately, yeah, for him, for Justin Grant, Emerson Axum slips through. And Buddy Kofoid as well. As Grant's got to get back to the whip again for the number two car. Kofoid slips up right on the snoot. And the number two car clipped these whiskers for him. And now Grant's got to get back to the throttle again with now Cannon McIntosh closing. Grant's not able to get back around the outside. He'll throw a slider down into the corner. A slow one. And Kofoid's able to clear back around. That was a touch of the tires. Down at the apex of that quarter, and again they're close. Nose to tail, out of turn number two, down to back straightaway. McIntosh watching it all go down for the number 86 car. Back fourth on the field, lap traffic lies ahead. Shannon McQueen will be the first one to fall victim to Emerson Axum up front if he can catch her. She is lickety split. Grant with a slider on Kofoy. Kofoy back down to the inside. That battle for second, third, fourth, and soon to be fifth. Tremendous out of turn number four. Seavey's finding speed now. He's coming to life. Good hustle down into the corner. Cannon McIntosh slips up off the bottom. CV says, see you, bye. Hit picks off a spot. Moves that 57 car up one more position. It's heavy lap traffic now for Emerson Axum. A little dodge through the eye. The needle picks off the queen and E both. Down into turn number one and two and down to back straight away. Keep an eye on him. Look out, he ran out of real estate. On to the binders hard. Ede on the high side. It's going to get brushed by the wayside. Grant slips through the inside of Kofoy. Meanwhile, CV slipped through there like a ninja. Moves himself into second on the field. Kofoid and Grant are still duking out, wondering how the blue car got out ahead of them. Pounding the rim. Onto the front straightaway goes Emerson Axum. Axum's going to have to dodge down to the inside if he's going to clear the next car. And here comes Seavey Low Peak. 57 cars got to move down into the corner. Hustles it on the high side. Axum down low. Leaves himself open to attack. Here comes Seavey Big Wheelie. Oh, score Axum there. Still got that top spot. Slams the door in the face of Seavey as those two cars continue to duke it out with Buddy Kofoid entering the fray. Kofoid snuck up on the back of him. Now goes down to the inside looking for moisture for the 67K car. Into the mix, Seavey. Bold move down low. Corners his way through. Axum's able to turn it back down low for the 68 car. Not able to get up there and challenge on that top spot. Kofoid's right there. 67K back behind as CV goes. P1 for the number 57. Axum now running the gun and trying to keep in touch with CV. As they charge into the corner. Eight laps remain this time coming out. CV's not out of the woods just yet as we go one into the fence. Up and over. Red flag coming out. Gavin Miller launched up into the fence, rode the rail, and then flipped at the very end. He is set to pick up the pace. He's going to the high side. Ooh, a little tricky. So down into the corner he goes. Justin Grant's going to capitalize on it. He was tweaking on the knobs in the cockpit of that race car. Took a shot at Axum. Couldn't make it stick. Axum able to get back around into second on the field. Meanwhile, in the back behind, Dason Pursley is able to escape from the 25K car. Boy, she just winged one out across there. Dragging herself up through it. Another slide job just ahead. And we have unleashed the hounds in these final laps. There's your white flag coming out for CB. CB rifles down into turn number one and two and on to the back straightaway for the number 57 on the quest for his sixth feature event win of the year. And more points for him as he leaves Bakersfield Speedway. That drive for the championship looking stellar for CB. Is up and out of the car he comes. How about a race fans? Make some noise for Logan CB. We'll send it down with Drake York. 
The hits just keep coming for Sutter California's Logan CV. Kirk Simpson coming in, giving him a hug. Kinley in victory lane as well as Logan CV gets the 15th win of his national career in the Johnny Kofer throwback, no less. Here comes Johnny. He was excited when this car was unveiled to him, and I think he's even more excited now that it's found its way in victory lane. And for the second time in his career, Logan Seavey is a winner here at the Bakersfield Speedway. We'll get him decorated, then over to the front of the car for a word. Chet, you just talked about all the things he's done this year, and it is crazy to see what Logan Seavey is doing in really every race car he hops in right now. How about it, Bakersfield, California? Logan Seavey, your winner. Logan, see to your hard charge as well, ninth to first, and Logan, a lot of raw speed aboard the 57, but it seemed like some things just worked out for you perfectly, especially when you went from fourth to second. What would you say is the combo between raw speed and luck coming into play here for this win tonight here at Bakersfield? Yeah, that's just um, racing really, right? You know, you got two guys racing in front of you, and the easiest way to, to go by two good guys is to catch them when they're racing each other, and I was able to do that, and it just uh, speaks how good this car is. You know, we were a little off there early in the night, but uh, we got it all squared away and, and sorted out, and uh, man, good in the heat race, really good there in the feature. Um, yeah, you know, the bottom was so narrow and so slick to, to go down there uh, for the first time in a long time and, and to nail the bottom and go by, you know, two of the, two of the best cars in the field is, is cool. So, um, like I said, it just speaks about how good this car is, and I say it a lot, when your car is, is this good, you can be patient and, and wait for the right moves to, you know, to come open and, and then take them when you get a chance and, and not, not mess them up when you do get the chance. So, um, like I said, you don't get a chance to, to go by two guys um, fairly easily like that, especially Buddy and Justin, and uh, they're just racing so hard with each other that, um, you know, I was able to sneak by down there on the bottom and then get right back up and, and get my speed back going. So, um, like I said, it's, this car is it's so good, and even when we get a little behind, you know, we, we figure it out really quick and, and get it right back. And, uh, Johnny was a little nervous. So, you know, he said, man, I buried, or we buried you. And I said, no worries. Um, you know, we'll take care of it. And, and we did, and we're here. So it's uh, really cool. And while we're talking about moves you had to make to win this race, the move you made on Emerson Axon was really interesting, kind of something we hadn't seen all night, the way you set it up. How did you set that move up, and why do you think it stuck as well as it did? Yeah, like I said, you just have to kind of watch um, where he was lacking and where I was good, and I could really just get him a little bit that last 10 feet of the exit of the straight or the exit of the corners, and and then motor up on him down the straightaway. And um, I seen him kind of pull out of line, trying to get by the the 68, and he pulled out just a tick too soon, and I was able to get a big run. And um, I could see he was going for the slider, and um, he didn't get all the way to the berm, so I was able to get down to the berm and, and then grab the moisture and just drive right across in, in front of him. And um, you know, after that, that's about as, as good as it can get because you know he's he's not gonna be able to have a good turn down and get another run. So. Uh, after that, you feel pretty secure, at least going down the back stretch, and, and then same thing, you just got to get up and get going again and, and try to get away from them because, uh, like I showed earlier in the race, if you get racing with people side by side, it just presents a huge opportunity for a guy, you know, to come from behind and, and get by both of you guys. So, um, yeah, I just can't thank, you know, Brent Cox, John Lunsford, everybody enough, everybody who puts the effort into this car, uh, all of our crew guys, everyone that, like I said, puts effort in, all of our sponsors. Um, so, so cool to get this uh, Blue 57 in victory lane for Johnny, and uh, we got five more tries out here at West to, to win a few more. Well, I see Johnny. Let's see if we can get Johnny up here really quick. We'll get Johnny over here because I know he was stoked about this race car merely hitting the racetrack. And now he's got to be excited. This thing's in victory lane. Johnny, come here. Let's get you with your driver. Johnny, you were awfully surprised when they unveiled this car to you. How special is it to now see it in victory lane? It's just perfect. I mean, uh, I can be more proud of the whole team and what Brent Cox has done, you know, for us uh, and develop this team so quickly. And without this kid's help, it's just uh, phenomenal to watch him race. Keith just had a good idea. He said, these guys went ahead and did the blue 57. He's going to bring the black 15 out with boat boat steel, and that could be trouble because he was he whooped me all the time, so we could be in trouble. But man, what a deal! That was so cool. Johnny Kofer and Logan C in victory lane on the West Coast with the throwback machine. He's your winner here for the second time in his career at the November Classic.